Hey everybody, it's Randy Ray at the Literate Texan here at Driftwood Ranch. And it is a cold and wet and rainy Thursday, which makes it a perfect day for me to talk about my 20 favorite books. I'm not gonna waste much time, I'm gonna get right into these. I reserve the right to change any book on this list and the ranking of any book on this list anytime I want to. But uh, number 20 on my list of 20 favorite books which I reread for June on the Range this year and will probably reread for June on the Range next year is Shane by Jack Schaefer. And a lot of people have probably seen the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, you've probably seen some remake of it or some movie that was inspired by it. Um, Old Man Logan or Logan, which was based on Old Man Wolverine, obviously was inspired by Shane. Then also there was Pale Rider with Clint Eastwood is basically a remake of Shane. But the original movie Shane with Alan Ladd is absolutely terrific. Um, but the novel is really beautifully written. And it's very short too. Uh, it's only 119 pages. You can easily finish this in an afternoon. But uh, it's definitely, it's not my favorite Western, but it's, it's definitely one of my two favorite Westerns, as you will see. I do not have copies of every one of my 20 favorite books to hold up, but number 19 is one of the ones that I don't have a copy of, and that's a novel called Spin by Robert Charles Wilson, and it's the first book in the Spin trilogy. Uh, won the Hugo Award in 2006, but Spin, um, I don't want to get into too many spoilers, but at the start of the novel, a uh, scientist and some of his friends are outside in their backyard when suddenly all the stars disappear. And it turns out it has to do with, with some kind of membrane that uh, makes it hard to see out into space, but it also changes how quickly time passes inside the membrane as compared to outside the membrane. So that's the big science thing that goes on. And there's other stuff too, but uh, it's really well written. The characters are super compelling. It's uh, probably my favorite science fiction novel. For, for whatever reason, though, the sequel just didn't catch my eye. Go figure. Number 18 on my list is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. And I know everybody says that the Kurt Vonnegut novel that you should read is, uh, oh, now I can't remember the name of it. Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse Five. That's the one everybody says you should read. Um, I've read Slaughterhouse Five multiple times, and I've read Cat's Cradle multiple times too. In fact, I've read all of Kurt Vonnegut's books, and uh, for my money, Cat's Cradle is far and away his best book, which is too bad because it was also the first Kurt Vonnegut novel that I read. So, you know, it's a bummer to uh, for your very, very first novel to be the absolute best work from that author. Although I like most of his other stuff well enough, so. Number 17, and I'm a big fan of the legal thriller. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably know this. I, uh, I start almost every day watching an episode of Suits, in fact, which is more of a soap opera than a legal thriller. But uh, number 17 on my list is Presumed Innocent by Scott Turow. I'm not a big John Grisham fan. I think his work is pretty lightweight. I think Scott Turow, on the other hand, is a terrific writer. And Presumed Innocent is the best novel that he's written. So forgive me, my medication makes my mouth dry, so I have to take a sip of something before I continue. Number 16 on my list, another one that I don't have a copy to hold up, is The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. I can't imagine that anybody's unfamiliar with The Silence of the Lambs. Uh, if nothing else, you've probably seen the movie. But, uh, but anyway... Absolutely terrific novel. Uh, Harris's other novels, you never know how they're going to go. But The Silence of the Lambs, absolutely terrific. Number 15 on my list is a novel from Chuck Palahniuk, and it's called Lullaby. And I don't love everything from Chuck Palahniuk. Some of the stuff from Chuck, Chuck Palahniuk I think I absolutely hate. But Lullaby was terrific. And Lullaby is the story of a man who learns something called the culling song, which was used to, it was a magical way of, of killing someone so that you could cull them out of the tribe and keep the tribe stronger. 
And uh, this man learns this spell and basically gets so good at it that he can just think someone to death. He just thinks, okay, you're dead, and then they die. So anyway, it's kind of an interesting premise for a novel. It's actually kind of scary, um, but not the kind of scary that you're probably used to, okay? So uh, that's number 15, Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk. Number 14, I actually have a copy of this, but I unfortunately left it in the other room. Barney's Version by Mordecai Richler, which uh, which I came to through the film, which starred Paul Giamatti, and it was absolutely terrific. But uh, it has to do with a character who was killed and his friend who survived and uh, his friend's failing memory of what actually happened because he doesn't really remember. So uh, it travels through time. There's, uh, you know, Lots of flashbacks and that sort of thing. Number 13 on my list, and I could almost pick any of James Lee Burke's books for this one, but I decided to go with Heroa Show. James Lee Burke has written this long series of novels about a detective in Louisiana, or, you know, sometimes he's a detective, sometimes he's a, a cop, sometimes he just owns a bait store, but he's also a recovering alcoholic. The character's name is Dave Robichaux. Again, work of literature that I came through, came to through a movie. I had seen a movie called uh, In the Electric Mist, which was based on In the Electric Mist with Confederate Dead by James Lee Burke. But Robichaux is, uh, is my favorite of those novels, but just by hair. And I haven't read all of them either, but, uh, you know, in terms of crime fiction, James Lee Burke might be the most literary author of crime fiction that I've ever read. It's absolutely terrific. Number 12 on my list is The Fool's Progress by Edward Abbey. And uh, this one I came to when I was in college. My sociology professor mentioned that he was reading it. And it's the story of Henry Lightcap, who's like 64 years old. His fourth wife leaves him. So he gets drunk on Jack Daniels and takes out his pistol, shoots his refrigerator, bakes a loaf of bread, then gets in the truck with his dog and drives 3,500 miles to visit his brother on the other coast. And uh, along the way, he flashes back and remembers his life and, and everything that happened during his life. And it's a little bit of a picaresque novel, too, because Henry Lightcap is definitely a, a Picaro character. And, uh, yeah, anyway, it's a fine, fine novel. Uh, probably wouldn't be real popular with some of the politically correct crowd these days. Um, Henry Whitecaps definitely got a lot of misogynistic tendencies. Number 11 on my list is a book that I read in high school, and I have a beautiful edition of this that I want to show off. It's All the King's Men by Robert Penn Warren, which has been filmed twice. My edition comes in a slip case, and this is a slip case. It's empty now because I just pulled the book out of there. But anyway, really, really great book, and I believe this one won the Pulitzer. But this edition I have is just beautiful. It's even got the little cloth bookmark, you see? But uh, I bought this at Recycled Books and Records. It's got the nice end papers and everything. And this has been on my list of books to reread for quite a while now. So I should probably get into it. But it's an illustrated edition, too. The illustrations are by Warren Chapel. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not, uh, I'm just not that conversant in the world of artists. Number 10 on my list, and I'm lumping all eight of these books together, is uh, the Sherlock Holmes books. And I have a two-volume set, the complete Sherlock Holmes volumes one and two. But rather than try to pick out just one book out of the entire canon of Sherlock Holmes, I'm just going to call it all one book. So that consists of four novels, uh, Study in Scarlet, Sign of Four, The Hound of the Baskervilles, and Valley of Fear, Plus, there were 56 short stories, which, if I'm not mistaken, were collected into four or five different volumes. I don't know. I could look through the uh, I could look through the table of contents here and figure this out. But but I know there were the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, the Case Book of Sherlock Holmes, and so on and so forth. Uh, the earlier stuff tends to be better. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes and the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes are are probably the two best collections of short stories. I'm not as big a fan of The Hound of the Baskervilles as some people are, but uh, but people love it. Uh, Study in Scarlet's really great, too. It's your introduction to the character. And uh, one of the cool things about some of the novels is that uh, about half the novel takes place 
somewhere else with a bunch of different characters. So like A Study in Scarlet, heck, half the novel's a Western. So anyway, that's my two-volume set of Sherlock Holmes. That's number 10 on my list. Number nine on my list is a book that I read just this year, and that's The Quiet American by Graham Greene. And I'd seen the movie with Michael Caine and Brendan Fraser, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't know how I was going to feel about this particular film or this particular novel, um, but it was absolutely gripping, well-written, terrific book. I have a whole list of Graham Greene novels that I want to read now since I read that, but absolutely wonderful book. Number eight is one of those candidates for the great American novel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, which you know is such a part of the canon, and presumably everybody who's watching my channel are readers, that I probably don't need to say much about The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn other than to say it's an entirely different experience from its prequel, the uh, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. It's just not even in the same category. Number seven is a book that I recently reread as a buddy read with my friend Greg at another bibliophile reads, and that is The World According to Garth, which is one of the first adult novels that I ever read, and it's just as fine a novel now as it was then. John Irving might have written better books. Um, some people really love The Cider House Rules, or A Prayer for Owen Meany, which are great books, and they may, in fact, be better than The World According to Garp, but this is not a list in terms of quality. This is a list in terms of how much I like them. Okay, this is my favorite 20 books, and uh, that's my favorite John Irving novel. And this is going to be a surprise, and maybe a disappointment to, to some people who don't like him. Stephen King's 11 is my sixth favorite book of all time. I think this is absolutely terrific. And the funny thing about Stephen King is, you know, he's a, there's, a, there's an old uh, nursery rhyme. The little girl had a curl right in the center of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. And that's pretty much how you could describe Stephen King's writing. When he's good, he's very, very good. When he's bad, he's just horrid. Um, I'd almost rather gouge my eye out with a spork than have to read the Tommy Knockers again. But when he's good, he's really good. And sometimes he's singing way outside of his range and hitting every note perfectly. And that's what he does in 11-22-63. Um, there's a miniseries on Hulu that I don't think does the book justice at all. But it's, it's really a fine novel. And it's really long. It's, uh, God, I want to read it again now. Suddenly, golly, it's 841 pages long, but it doesn't seem like it's 841 pages long. I read through it very quickly. Stephen King did a reading of 11-22-63 when it came out in Dallas, and I was lucky enough to have VIP tickets for that, so it was really good. I did not make it into the reception area to actually get to meet him, but I was dying to because I'm six foot three and I weigh 640 pounds, and uh, I was just dying to tell Stephen King that I was his biggest fan. Get it? Biggest fan. So, my copy of Lonesome Dove is out of reach, but it is my number five favorite book of all time. Another book that I read just this year. Um, wasn't sure what to expect. I really like Larry McMurtry. Everyone had always told me what a terrific book Lonesome Dove was, but I don't always like everything that everyone else likes. Sometimes I turn my nose up at it if too many people like it because, oh, it's too popular. How good could it possibly be? Well, in the case of Lonesome Dove, it's very, very good indeed. Lonesome Dove is one of those books that's probably going to make it on my list of books that I need to reread every year. Um, next on my list is another old one. And I was really proud to have read this in sixth grade. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get to the first volume of it here. I read this six times in the sixth grade. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And this is the first book, The Fellowship of the Ring. But it's really, from what I understand, even though it was published in, in three different volumes, it, it, it's considered one novel by its author. That's good enough for me. But uh, The Lord of the Rings is terrific. Everybody knows about it. Everybody's seen the movies. At this point, there's not much to say about it other than, uh, wow. It's so great, you know. 
Number three on my list is another book that I try to reread annually, and that's The Great Gatsby. You may or may not be able to tell how battered this particular copy of The Great Gatsby is, but uh, The Great Gatsby is another one of those books that's really, really marvelous, but also that you can read easily in a single afternoon or an evening. This edition is 180 pages long, so it's a little longer than Shane, um, but luckily the font's a little bigger in this edition than in that edition of Shane that I showed you earlier, because there's a little paperback edition of Shane, mass market paperback with really tiny lettering. But if you haven't read F. Scott Fitzgerald and The Great Gatsby, you really owe it to yourself to, to give it a read. It's absolutely terrific. And unlike a lot of novels that I read when I was a younger man, this one improves over time. You know, um, The Catcher in the Rye, for example, is a book that has not improved over time. I really loved it as a young man, but as a 50-something-year-old man, I'm like, well, gee whiz. You really liked that a lot when you were younger, didn't you? So, number two, and he's one of my favorite authors, is John Steinbeck. And my favorite book by him is Travels with Charlie. Although, it's really tough to pick a favorite out of Steinbeck's novels because I could have just as easily chosen Of Mice and Men or Cannery Row, The Grapes of Wrath, East of Eden, even his uh, version of The Noble Acts of King Arthur and His Knights, which, which he didn't finish, any of those could easily have been my choice for my number two favorite. But I didn't want to have a list of just John Steinbeck novels. That wouldn't make for a very good, you know, my favorite books list. And finally, the song that I've sung the praises of, a book that I've sung the praises of many times on here before, but it's not easily accessible. I've got multiple copies of it laying around here. It's a science fiction novel, but it's a very literary science fiction novel called Everything Matters by Ron Curry Jr. And it's the story of a character who has a voice inside his head that seems to know everything, who is constantly talking to him. Well, not constantly, but, but talking to him often enough. But who explains to him that on... Uh, such and such date, when he's 36 years old or whatever, an asteroid is going to collide with the Earth and destroy all life on the planet. So uh, in light of that, in light of the fact that, that everything on Earth is going to, going to end, you know, does anything this character does matter? And uh, you might gather from the title the conclusion that the author comes to. But it's the getting to that point from here to there that makes it so interesting. But the novels are told from varying viewpoints. The audio production is excellent because they have different readers for each uh, chapter based on which character's perspective it's being written from. Um, I've read this one countless times. I've listened to it on audio too when my arm was broken and I couldn't very well turn pages in a book. But uh, it's well worth your time if you've never read it. Everything Matters by Ron Curry Jr. That's my list of my 20 favorite books, I would very much be interested in hearing about your favorite books in the comments or in your own videos. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, but uh, thank you for watching. I hope this gave you some ideas of something you might like to read, but it's a little insight into some of the stuff that I really, really like a lot better than anything else. See you next time.